Municipal elections will be taking place across Alberta on October the 18th. And today, we have the opportunity to speak with one of our mayoral candidates here in Lethbridge, Stephen Mogden. Stephen, welcome to Bridge City News. Thanks very much, Hal. Nice to be here today. Now, first of all, let's dive into exactly who Stephen Mogden is. What do you do for a living? Tell me about your connection to Lethbridge and why you decided to run for mayor. Yeah, for sure. Uh, again, thanks for having me, Hal. So I've uh, been a Lethbridge resident for 20 years now, just a little over 20 years. Uh, I grew up in Calgary, but uh, moved down to Lethbridge after I uh, graduated from law school. Uh, I am married, uh, have been for almost 24 years. Uh, we have two, uh, son, two sons, uh, one of whom is uh, uh, over 18. Uh, I'm a lawyer, so I've been uh, practicing here in Lethbridge ever since I came to Lethbridge uh, with uh, Stringham Law, uh, was previously Stringham Denneke. Uh, people might know that name. Uh, but yeah, I've, I've been with the firm uh, the whole time. Uh, I've been a partner here for more than 10 years. Um, so that's what I do in my uh, day job. Uh, the nice thing about being a lawyer uh, here in town is that it affords you the ability to uh, do some other things as well. And so I've always taken advantage of that and served my community on uh, various boards. Um, uh, currently, I'm sitting on the YMCA board and have been a, been a past chair of that and been involved with that for going on about six years now. Uh, previously, um, president of the Chamber of Commerce. I've been on the board for the Downtown Business Revitalization Zone for uh, two terms, so six years altogether. I've uh, been involved with the John Howard Society and with the uh, Lethbridge uh, uh, Economic Recovery Task Force that Economic Development Lethbridge uh, put together. Uh, so I've always been uh, involved in my community and, and supporting my community and things that I think are important. And uh, so that's probably the biggest reason that I wanted to run uh, was that serving in that capacity as mayor of Lethbridge would be kind of the biggest stage for me to be able to, to do that, to help my community. Um, and uh, I think it's going to be important. Now, Stephen, you say you want to bring a positive and collaborative approach when it comes to leadership here in the city. Can you give an example of what you see as divisive leadership versus positive leadership? Uh, absolutely, Hal. Uh, so we don't really have to look very far to see an example of uh, a divisive leadership uh, situation on council. Really, the past four years, the past term uh, of council has seen a lot of uh, uh, division, uh, a lot of uh, acrimony, uh, a lot of personal attacks. Uh, and I think that's really unfortunate and something that people look at and uh, wonder why that should be happening. Um, and that's bad enough. But really, the, the bigger problem with that is that it prevents uh, decisions from being made in a manner that best reflects the community. Uh, now, I'm not saying that council should at all times be, you know, uh, in unanimity or uh, have a full consensus on anything. There's, there's always room for healthy debate. Uh, you'll always see that in any group of people. But uh, when it comes to making decisions, what we've seen over the past is uh, people forming into camps uh, here on council uh, and really getting entrenched uh, and failing to uh, continue listening uh, to other ideas. And ultimately, that results in poorer decisions for our community. Uh, and we'll, that'll, that'll bring a long-term uh, negative effect to us. So uh, that's something where we need to, to work on that and be a lot more uh, collaborative as we move forward on council. Now, most people agree, Stephen, that there's a real need to help those struggling with addiction and homelessness here in our city. We still have the opioid crisis. Now, the supervised consumption site was a very divisive topic here in our city with people strongly in favor and as well, a lot of business owners strongly opposed. Where do you stand? Absolutely. Well, you know, with that uh, supervised consumption site, uh, there were some problems with, with how it was run. Uh, its location might have been uh, chosen a little better. That being said, uh, you know, I, I don't want to cast too much blame on uh, previous decisions for that uh, because something had to, uh, to happen fairly quickly with that. Um, a lot of people tend to forget that, you know, we, we were dealing with a fairly unprecedented uh, problem in terms of the op opioid crisis. Uh, hitting Lethbridge. And uh, so something had to be done. Um, you know, sometimes we'll see mistakes in execution when that uh, takes place, but, uh, you know, th there needed to be something uh, taking place and something uh, into uh, in, into effect. So so we did. Um, I think a city that is uh, as large as Lethbridge is going to have some issues with uh, with drug use. Uh, I think that's just 
um, to be expected with you know the, the size of population that we have. And because of that, I think we need to have uh, supervised consumption services available to people. Uh, we do have some of that right now, but supervised consumption services need to be uh, complemented by a number of other services. So you think of things like mental health supports, uh, the ability uh, to have uh, detox services, uh, rehabilitation recovery services, um, housing, uh, so traditional, uh, I'm sorry, uh, transitional uh, supportive housing. Uh, all of those things are necessary to really set people up to overcome what is a, you know, a very, very difficult problem to overcome uh, and hopefully get towards uh, success and, and being a you know, very positive uh, contributing member of, of our society. So we need to have those things in place. Uh, I would uh, give some kudos to uh, our provincial government for taking some steps uh, recently in, in announcing some funding for, uh, for a facility out to, uh, in the county, but, but you know, close enough that it should benefit Lethbridge residents. Uh, we need to have some more of that as we move forward. Let's talk about a potential dry site similar to the proposal that the mustard seed recently brought forward. Now, do you think there are some potential places in our city where this could work? And maybe have this dry site work with organizations like Streets Alive and the Soup Kitchen? Well, and certainly, uh, Hal, I think we need to have uh, a range of services available for people. Uh, some people will not uh, find a lot of success with a dry site, but some people will. Um, and that can fill a definite need for people. So I think we need to look at having those things in place. I, need, I think we need to make sure that we are locating those uh, carefully and going about it in a very deliberative and collaborative manner. It's something where we need to make sure that we are engaging our community, engaging our uh, community leaders to find suitable sites uh, having a dialogue with people that are going to be affected by that site, whether it's a neighbor, whether it's you know somebody that that is in the area for services or what have you, uh, we need to make sure that that's something that's not just sort of dropped on a, a location. Uh, and part of that is having a, a a broader conversation with the community so that you know the the rest of the community understands why it's being uh, chosen for, for wherever it's being uh, suggested for, uh, what the benefits are and what the drawbacks are. I mean, you, you tend to see uh, people leap to, con to conclusions about uh, what a site, you know, whether it's a dry site or not, uh, what a site like that is going to bring with it. Uh, and, and in some cases that just really sort of clouds the discussion and prevents uh, you know, prevents having some success in finding a place that's going to, it's going to work for the community. Stephen, Stats Canada says when it comes to crime severity index, it's really not good news for Lethbridge. We're number one, especially when it comes to petty crime. Explain your vision as potential mayor for our city on cutting down on crime. For sure. Uh, always a, uh, always a difficult um, subject to, uh, to crack. That being said, uh, I think that the same um, crime severity index report uh, that was just uh, released uh, also shows that uh, you know things are improving uh, in Lethbridge uh, in terms of uh, you know benchmarking us from this year compared to last year, uh, and then uh, looking forward, uh, we need to assess what the effect of you know bringing in a new uh, police chief uh, and having. Uh, having him get his uh, legs under him and, and the department working uh, as he wants it to be working, uh, the effect that that's going to have as well. But greater than that, Hal, uh, I think we need to make sure that we are uh, making a serious uh, attempt to uh, provide support for people in our community. Uh, you know, we have a lot of people that struggle uh, with, with various uh, issues and crime tends to stem from those issues, the, the mental health issues, the addictions issues. Uh, that, that's really why uh, those, those crime activities take place. Now let's talk about the million dollars that was cut from the Lethbridge police budget. Would you put a million dollars back in to help Chief Shahim Medizadeh and his officers? Keep our streets safe. I think it's something that we need to constantly have a, a discussion about. Uh, we need, I mean, policing is is a very large budget item uh, in, in any city, and and Lethbridge is no different than that. As we move forward, we need to make sure that we are uh, addressing what the department needs. 
uh, when they need it. Whether that means that we're uh, replacing some or all of that uh, million dollar budget, that's a decision that the council is going to have to uh, come up with. Um, it's not something that I can say right at this point that that will uh, definitely be needed uh, or not. But as, as we move forward, we're going to have to look at where our police funding uh, is uh, going and where it's come from. Um, you know, the, the reality is if you cut uh, a million dollars out of a budget, that's going to have some impacts. Um, so we need to look at what the, what that looks like as we move forward. Let's talk about a potential third bridge for the west side over the Old Man River. Uh, Lethbridge Mayor Chris Spearman says because it's all of it's in Lethbridge, none of it's on provincial land, 13% property tax increase. Alberta, you know, Lethbridge residents will have to foot the bill for the entire bridge. What are your thoughts on that? Do we need a third bridge here in Lethbridge in the city? Uh, we may. Um, and I'm sorry to be, uh, I don't know if you would call that evasive or not, but uh, I think what we really need to do, Hal, is take a look at uh, what are the costs, what are the, uh, what are the traffic flows. I mean, does it, does it make sense for us to have that now? Does it make sense for us to be planning for that in the next five years or 10 years? Uh, there's a lot of issues at play here, uh, budget issues, uh, growth issues. I tend to think uh, myself that uh, a third bridge would foster growth uh, and would encourage uh, movement between the west side uh, and the south side. And I think uh, by itself, that is uh, ultimately a good thing, but it has to make sense for us economically. Uh, we need to make sure that, you know, are, are we able to get grants for uh, to go towards that from uh, the different orders of government? If so, uh, maybe that is something that we can uh, that we can look at uh, putting in place sooner rather than later. Eventually, we'll need it. I mean, it's it's just that simple. Uh, whether we're there yet now, um, that remains to be seen. You've gone on record saying that inclusion and reconciliation are very important to you, Stephen. Can you share what an inclusive city looks like in your view? Uh, absolutely. So any community is made up of uh, you know. A, a myriad uh, of people and they, they have different abilities and different challenges. Uh, and so a community I think is ultimately judged on how well it deals with people who face those, uh, those challenges. Uh, it, you know, and, and that comes about in various ways, right? Uh, some people have uh, difficulty with uh, things like uh, housing. Some people have difficulties with uh, maybe language issues uh, if they're uh, you know, uh, an immigrant from, uh, from another, uh, another community. Um, some people may have difficulty in you know, facing a job interview or you know, finding suitable work for their, uh, for their abilities. Uh, all of those things are things that we as a community need to look at uh, making sure that we're, we are bringing those people in as best we can. And the city, I think, can play a key role in supporting organizations that interface uh, with those people and making sure that you know, if you are a Lethbridge resident and you want to be involved, whether it's you know, employment, volunteer activities, uh, whatever the case may be, you have the ability to do that and you don't face uh, you know, additional barriers. Now, some people are saying this election really is a two-horse race between current city councillor Blaine Hagan and former two-term councillor Bridget Mearns. How do you respond to that, Stephen? Uh, I guess we'll see what happens on October 18th. <laughs> I guess we will, that's right. Now, when people think of Lethbridge, they not only think of the legendary wind here, but also agriculture. Some say we should not put all of our apples into the ag basket, but diversify like other cities are doing. Outside of agriculture, what other business do you think we should attract to our city to help boost our local economy? Well, so, so two, uh, Hal, uh, one of which I think is tourism. Uh, I, I think we can be doing a, a lot more uh, on tourism, uh, sport tourism, uh, and taking advantage uh, of the, the many great sites that we have uh, in uh, Lethbridge, around Lethbridge, close, close to Lethbridge. Uh, so that's one. Uh, another that you traditionally look at is uh, technology, right? Uh, technology services that don't necessarily need to be located in one place uh, or another. Uh, that's something that we can look at uh, trying to attract and foster here in Lethbridge. I mean, we have a, a great potential uh, that we are you know, currently realizing on in terms of our, our role in the, the agri-food sector. And that's wonderful for, for Lethbridge, right? Um, like you say, you, if you put all your, all your eggs in one basket, uh, you might face some difficulties with that. So I think it 
uh, is good for any community to diversify its economy. Stephen Mogden is one of the mayoral candidates in Lethbridge, and he's hoping for your vote on October the 18th. Stephen, thanks so much for your time today. Thanks very much, Al. Always a pleasure.